Today we're looking at one of the best pedal sets for less than 500 euros, the Simlab XP1. Okay, I do want to start with the usual disclaimer. These pedals were provided by Simlab for the review, but as always, Simlab does not get to see this video or has any impact on the script, and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. So I'd say we'll take the pedals out of the huge box. We are getting a little manual how to install pedals, and we have the brake, and also electronics that we need to look at, and the throttle. Tons of cables, these are those RJ style cables to connect the pedals to the electronics. And it also comes with tons of mounting hardware, that's very very nice to see. Different preload springs, casually lost a few. Yeah, I'd say we'll just get rid of the box and have a closer look at what's in here. But maybe before I forget, the two pedal set 499 euros, the three pedal set 649 euros. They're also available in a nice blackout edition, this is the normal colorful edition. And you can also get this heel rest for 35 euros, I mean it's a piece of metal, your heel will rest just fine on it. But yeah, this mounts very easily to at least the Simlab P1X Pro pedal deck. Also if you want to save 5%, there is an affiliate link in the description down below, use that. Combine it with code DAN5 and you should be able to save 5% on checkout. So what do we have here? Apart from the pedals, we do get the heel rest mounting hardware. Then we get different um, springs. This is like the, I don't really want to say the preload spring, that is for the first stage of the brake. You have a softer one, a stiffer one, then a little spacer that comes in between here to basically limit the compression of the spring. And this is here for the throttle pedal. Like I put the stronger spring in here because this one is relatively soft, but the stronger one works well in the middle position. Then we also get all the mounting hardware, whether you mount it to profiles with T-nuts or just like to a pedal deck with, um, with nuts and everything. It comes with pretty much everything in the box. That's awesome to see. It's always like a struggle to find the fitting mounting hardware. Hardware. We also do get these little cables. First of all, micro USB cable, yes, but don't worry, they changed that to USB C if you buy the pedals now. And then these RJ11 type, I don't know what exactly this is, like looks like old phone connector, but this is what you use to connect the pedal to the electronics. And then last but not least, we do get two different elastomers in the box as well. A very soft one and a stiffer one, 70A, 50A. I'm not sure what's mounted in here right now. I would assume 60A, we'll take it out in a second and have a look. But yeah, so the pedals do come with pretty much everything you need. Everything is pretty much toolless to adjust, so you also don't need any hardware to adjust settings on the pedals. But when you take them out of the box, I have to say, when I first saw the pictures, the renders, I thought, these pedals do not look very pretty. I thought it looked like a toy, but honestly, if you see them in person, this is probably one of the prettiest and best built pedal set that I have reviewed so far. We do have an all aluminum, I think, construction, and it just screams quality, to be honest. Like the rails here, I mean, they are now slightly scratched up because I had them installed at the rig, obviously. It's just so premium. It's very, very awesome to see. The nice blue accent, I mean, of course, purple would have been better, but we are not gonna complain about that. And what they did here is pretty much, they made everything blue or like in that accent color that is adjustable. Well, apart from the angle for the pedal face and, and stuff like here, the height adjustment. I think it's a pretty good idea and it's just a very high quality, premium feeling pedal set. I was very surprised for 499. This is definitely way better than I expected. Also way better than I expected when I saw the renders. Like I said before, I also installed some little 3D printed caps for the screws here on the front because then it's more comfortable to drive with socks. But that's probably the only plastic that you can find on the pedals right now. But yeah, let's have a closer look at the throttle first. Adjust Stability. Like I said, blue accents in the front, you can adjust the pedal travel. So if I remove the, the counter nut here, I mean, it's now in the longest travel option, which is more than good enough. But if I wanted to reduce the pedal travel a bit, I would screw this screw in here. And then you can see we now have less travel, but I just prefer to have it in the longest position. And to find out how much you have to screw it out, you can pretty much like push the pedal and then turn the, the little thumb screw here. And once you lose the resistance, you know you're at the maximum travel, then you can just counter. So the screw doesn't change position and you're good to go. Then for strength adjustment, there are three different possibilities. First of all, very simple. You can replace the spring, like take off this, this little pin, and then you can remove 
this assembly here. It's a spring centering device in the rear. And then you can just take out the spring, replace it with a stronger or softer one, whatever you prefer. Put it back together, install it in the rear part here. And then once you put it back together, you also have the possibility to mount this arm in three positions, either to the very top, that would give you the highest resistance, or in the middle or in the bottom. Bottom is lowest resistance. I like to run it in the middle one with a strong spring. That feels very, very nice to me. One thing you need to be a bit careful here, if you go to the lowest position, the throttle feels slightly non-linear when you push it. I don't think it's a big deal. It's just something that I noticed. And then the last possibility to adjust the strength is with the preload. Again, loosen the locking nut and then you can add preload by tightening this nut or remove preload by loosening it. And once you found the appropriate amount of force that you need to push the pedal, lock it in place and you're good to go. Then you can also adjust the pedal angle by loosening these two screws on the sides here, like this one and this one, and then the whole inside part of the pedal, the gray unit here, can be moved up or down to adjust the angle of the whole pedal, excluding the mounting bracket, of course, but that basically will also change the angle of the pedal arm. Then if we look at the pedal face, like I said earlier, it's slightly uncomfortable when driving with socks because there's quite a big hole for the screws. You get used to it, but if you go to the SimLab Discord, if you have a 3D printer, I would recommend to maybe print these covers, then it's very, very comfortable. You can adjust the angle of the pedal face as well. For that, you just loosen these screws here and then you can modify it slightly. And you can also mount this pedal face in two positions. This is the lowest one. I think if you have very small feet, it's probably still a bit high. It's definitely one of the tallest pedals that I've reviewed on the channel. I have it in the lower position. Works very well for my feet, but I'm a shoe size 45, 46 EU size, so not the tiniest feet. I've seen some people just invert the whole thing to basically mount it a bit lower. So if you struggle with that, that's also one thing that you can try. Just uh, be prepared that your OCD will be triggered because the SimLab will be upside down then. And if you want to mount these pedals to your pedal deck, it's definitely super, super easy to mount them. They have these long rails here and it should work with pretty much any pedal mounting solution that you have on your rig. Technology to determine the pedal position, hall sensors. One little thing to be careful here, it's not really a problem, but take that into consideration. The reading is non-linear. It's a unipolar hall sensor, so the closer the magnet gets to the sensor, the more change in signal per degree of pedal arm rotation it generates. So if you want to have a linear response between pedal position and signal to the game, you will have to correct that in the race director software. As of today, there's no preset that linearizes it perfectly. I think they should maybe add that in firmware because I think a linear correlation between pedal travel and output to the game should be the default because at the moment it would be like an exponential response from pedal arm to game output, but you can easily correct that in the software. I'll show you how to do that later. For the rest, I mean, there's absolutely zero flags. There are ball bearings used for the pivot points. I think a bushing here in the rear for this uh, spring holder mechanism. And honestly, there's nothing to criticize when it comes to build quality. And if we have a look at the brake, I mean, obviously it's very similar for adjustability. You have the angle adjustment of the whole pedal in the rear here. Then I'm not exactly sure if you can use these screws to limit the travel. We can try in a second um, to have an end stop for the brake. I haven't tried that actually. Let's, let's test it in a second once this unit is removed. But you can also adjust the angle of the pedal face and you also have three points to mount the elastomer stack to the pedal arm. Then again, zero play on this. Same problem as on the throttle with the quite big holes on the pedal face. Maybe SimLab can include these little covers in the box. I would love to see that. But I would say we'll take apart the elastomer stack and have a closer look. Again, very, very easy to unmount. One thing to take into consideration when I got the pedals, they squeaked a little bit because the elastomer was running dry within this assembly here. And that can just happen. Like I've had it happen on other pedals. Just add a little bit of grease and it will be gone. That's just like what elastomers will do sometimes. But if we remove this whole assembly here and we have this part in the rear that holds the load cell in place. Here we have the load cell itself. 
looks like this on the pedals. And something that is actually very nice, not a lot of pedals do this, with the load cell being in line with the elastomer stack, the force to game output reading will not get any more linear than what you can do with this solution. So this is very nice. This is a 200 kilogram load cell. You get an effective pedal pressure of around 100 kilogram with that. I think SimLab is thinking about offering an even stronger load cell, but honestly, like in my opinion, this is more than sufficient. Then we have this nice gold cap. I don't want to take this completely apart here in the rear because the more interesting things are in the front. Yeah, we have the 60A Shore Elastomer. So this is the medium strength in the box. I think it's already pretty stiff. I would probably go with a 50A myself. Then we have this little spacer, which is full of grease right now, you mean, <laughs> because of the squeaking and the spring. So you do have a two-stage system in place here. Wait, I wanted to try the end stop. Yeah, I think this screw does nothing on the brake. Not sure why it's on there. If I find out what it's doing after filming the review, I will add it in a graphic or something or B-roll. But this is now fully in and it's still the same travel. So maybe it's just like for the looks that all the pedals look the same, but it's not really doing anything. Okay, so let's actually replace the elastomer. Oops. Spring things. Then we'll put the 50A in, remove the 60, put in the elastomer rod or whatever we call this. Push this back in the rear assembly. You need to be careful that you match the slot in the rear part here with the with a little pin of that housing. And then put in the pin again. Highest position for the highest force. If you want to go lower force, you can mount it in the lower parts. And then I would always recommend to add a little bit of preload to remove the slack from the pedal arm, even though there probably won't be a lot. Yeah, I mean, if there's no preload and the pedal is very, very easy to push at the initial position, then it will just feel a little bit odd. So I would always recommend to add a little bit of preload which will get rid of the initial slack. We do have a two-stage system going on here. I mean, two-stage, like these days, everybody likes to call their pedals having a two-stage system. But pretty much what we have here is we have the initial compression for the spring. So this is the part that you will compress first. And after that is compressed, again, you can reduce it with that little spacer in the box. After you compress that, which I think is supposed to simulate that brake pad to brake disc travel. I don't know, never driven a race car. But I think it's supposed to simulate that. And after that is compressed, you compress the elastomer. And it's not a smooth transition. You can definitely feel those two stages. I think that's good. Some people might not prefer that, but if you do not like the spring feeling, just add the spacer, increase the preload till the spring is fully compressed. And then you basically will not have this two stage kind of system in effect. But yeah, one thing that I maybe would love to see included is like a spring option. Like, I don't know why, but at the moment, elastomers seem to be not cool and everybody wants springs. It would be nice to have it in the box. I personally like how the elastomers feel, but I think more options here would be better. Resolution of the pedals, 16 bits, at least for the input. The output is lower resolution because there's some filtering going on. It's absolutely negligible for actual use, but I'll talk about that when we're in the rig and I'll show you the software. But we'll also have a quick look at the electronics. Little plastic box. Um, let's see if we can actually open this up without destroying it completely. I'm just curious what they are using in here. All right, so we do <laughs> we do have micro USB in this one, but do not worry if you buy one of these now, they come with USB-C. I was talking to SimLab, like, are you serious with that? But they changed it. They also changed it on the handbrake. So that's good to see that they are listening to feedback. I mean, it's not like micro USB is a deal breaker or something. It's just like a freaking annoying cable. And I think everybody should just use USB-C these days and they do now, so that's not a big problem. And then inside here, um, I will actually take this further apart. I'm curious. Okay, well, that was a waste of effort. There's nothing on the rear. But if we look at the front, what do we have here? We do have a throttle input, brake clutch, one extension port, and one that is called secret. 
Interesting. Yeah, it uses the, the typical HX711 ADC, very, very commonly used chip to read out the inputs. And that is being processed by PIC18F25K50 chip. Not sure if this is a four layer or two layer board. There are no ground planes to be seen. Layout looks okay. Just some analog lines of for the extension where you're running very close to the data lines. But no, this looks fine. Pretty much industry standard HX711. Seen it in plenty of pedal electronics and the rest looks very, very clean. We have a little power IC here that generates the 3.3 volt for the microprocessor, I assume. And yeah, very, very minimalistic. Pedal electronics don't have to be fancy. I even think they do not need an external ADC if you do clever processing. Um, an ADC that comes in a standard STM32, more than sufficient. I made the electronics for the SIM grade pedals, for example, or for the newest Nuo electronics. And if you combine the fast readout with a clever filtering algorithm, I don't think you even need an external ADC. I mean, it doesn't hurt. It's just not really needed. But yeah, this is looking good. USB-C now on there, so that's good. And yeah, I would say we'll hop into the rig and I'll show you the software and we'll also drive a few laps and I'll talk about the pedals. All right, let's talk a little bit about the software. It's called Race Director. It is a software that works with all the SimLab and Grid peripherals. It's basically the hub where you can configure everything. You can also use this instead of SimHub for grid wheels, which is pretty cool. I mean, it is way more basic compared to SimHub, but it's nice that SimLab or Grid has something like this. Anyways, when you first start it, you need to click on News to get in the config menu. I don't know why that is, but you can also click this little wheel here, but click News, then enable the XP1 pedals, otherwise it will not show on the side. Maybe it would be nice to have automatic detection. I mean, the software should easily detect what is connected to the PC, but whatever. Then click the pedal icon, and then you see three tabs here, controller, support, and firmware. If you want to update the firmware, unfortunately you need a separate tool. It would be nice to have this integrated in here as well, but knowing that they are really focusing on the software and working on it, I wouldn't be surprised if at a later version this firmware update would be part of Race Director itself. But anyway, it's not a big deal. And you have pretty much all the customization that you typically want in a pedal. There's some stuff that is done very well. There's some stuff that I do not like too much. We don't have a clutch, so we'll start with the brake. You can see I use a slightly logarithmic curve here with a dead zone on top just to reduce pedal pressure a little bit. This does not mean that the output of the game will be uh, capped to 80% or so. It just means like whatever I calibrated, I use 80% or 83, 82% of that as the maximum output. I think you cannot do these tricks where you limit the brake output at like 80% for the game to not use ABS or to not lock up the tires in this. I cannot move this last point to the left. I can move all the other points left and right up and down for the custom curve. But the, the last one I can't really move at all. I can basically configure this dead zone with this field here and the same at the bottom. If I add 10% dead zone here, you see uh, it's add, it adds it here. But overall, it is a basic implementation, but you can do custom curves. You can do dead zone. You cannot limit the output, like I said. One thing that I find very annoying is there is no manual calibration. So whenever you hit calibrate and you recalibrate, the pedals, there's no display of raw values or anything. You pretty much have to guess whatever you did in the calibration before, then finish, and then pretty much hope it's the same as before. I would love to see a raw value display here. Maybe just like right click, show raw values, and then you can at least calibrate it similarly. No, Simacube, do not turn off. But yeah, it's not a big deal. It's just something that I would love to see in an update. And another thing that I found a little bit annoying is like the dead zone actually like affects the curve. So if I put this to zero, you see it does affect this last bit and then I need to redo my curve if I have something custom in here. Also not a big deal, but also something that I would love to see independent of the curve at all because the dead zone should not really affect the response from the pedals. Anyways, everything that you really need is in here. And for the throttle, I mean, it's pretty much the same as on the brake. Keep in mind, the whole sensor, the magnetic field is not linear. So if you use linear, the output actually is not linear. Like 
these last bits, you can probably see it here in the pedal cam. Like for example, this is 50% and this is the first 50%. So you see it's quite a lot of travel to get to 50 and then just a little bit for the last bit. It's because it's a unipolar hall sensor and you can easily compensate this with an exponential function here. You see it now I get this amount of travel for the first 50% to compare it to this. We are at maybe 25% with the linear response compared to, to my custom throttle curve. And then the last 50% of the pedal roughly is the last 50% of the output. The Azetec pedals, the Forte and Victor La Prima, they have the same thing on the throttle. Something I would love to see is like a built-in calibration for, or not calibration, a built-in compensation for that so that linear actually is linear. And then if you want to do non-linear, you can just still play with the curves. But maybe that is something that they can implement in firmware later. It's just something that I would find more natural instead of having to compensate it yourself. All right, when hitting the track, these pedals perform very well. I mean, there are tons of pedals on the market these days. But considering that these are 499 for the two pedal set, I think they outperform a lot of pedals that are significantly more expensive than those. And it has pretty much everything that you need. I mean, it's not a super fancy pedal set in terms of features with two stage and everything. It's a more basic thing, but it has everything that you need. And it has the load cell in line with the Elastomere stack, which helps a lot with linearity on braking. And I'm using the default configuration, which is very, very stiff. You have the, the spring here at the first part as you can see this compresses for quite a bit of travel and then after that it gets really stiff definitely stiffer than what I typically use I thought I'm gonna use it in the default configuration you can make this softer if you want no problem but actually uh, once I got used to it I liked it um, especially trail braking felt very intuitive with that sensitive part being in the, in the range where only the spring compresses. And yeah, I'm using the stiffer throttle spring in, I don't even know in which position. I don't think it's the strongest one, um, but the throttle feels very, very good. Honestly, coming from the Cinecube active pedal throttle, it is nice to have a throttle again that is very, very smooth. This is definitely something that the active pedal cannot do insanely well it's okay but it's just not as smooth as something like this and didn't have any issues with the throttle i'm using it on the travel setting that allows the most throw so if you want more than this you're out of luck but i think this is plenty there are some pedals that allow more travel i think hersingveld has a lot on the throttle if you want to there are a lot of pedals that have significantly less throttle travel like for example the Simgrade VX Pro um, but I think this is um, a very very good mid-range in terms of travel it should work for most people and then the brake Simlab says it has some dual stage thing but it's more like dual stage on all the pedals like the spring and then the elastomer but there's you're not getting to a point where the pedal really becomes solid i don't think it's really necessary i think it's perfectly acceptable for the asking price to not have features like this i don't really think anybody needs that it is nice to have for some cases but honestly i personally don't utilize this stuff a lot I mean, even in my in my Simacube pedal profile, I don't use the two-stage design. I mean, I have a hard end stop at 100%, which I think is pretty nice. But apart from that, I don't use any of these two-stage thingies. So, yeah, no, the, the brake feels really good. Like I said, you can make this softer if you want to. If I would run these pedals forever, I probably would put in an elastomere that is a little bit softer and maybe a spring that is a little bit stronger but it's personal preference i think everybody will find a setting that works for them with these pedals if you want haptics like you can see in the video i added one of those um some magic 
reactor things. Works very well. On the SimLab Discord you can find the mount for this. You can still access all the screws that you need to configure the pedals. And yeah, it's it's it works very well. It works just as well as on SimLab pedals. You need that little P2000 control box and one haptic reactor. I think it's roughly 100 or 120 euros or so for the upgrade. And it can help to feel the car a bit better. The advantage compared to the similar pedals is you can have wheel lock, wheel slip, stuff like that. I mean, the similar pedals supported on most games, not on iRacing though. I mean, iRacing also doesn't really support it, but SimHub has a weird way to figure out whether you lock the tires. I'd say it works relatively well, it's not perfect, but ABS works just as well as on the Cinecube pedals. And I don't have a 24 volt power supply for this, so I use a 12 volt, and even then it's still more than strong enough. I have it at 100%, and it's very, very noticeable. So if you're thinking about getting these, but you're thinking, ah, oh, maybe I want the Sim Magic with the haptics, you can add these things to pretty much every pedal set. You just need to get either a bit creative with mounting, or have a 3D printer, or you just order the 3D printed mounts. It's not expensive. But yeah, I mean, on the track, these pedals perform very, very well. The only thing, maybe, like, the brake seems slightly over-filtered. Um, I think whatever they do to the signal makes the signal a little bit slow. It's probably not a big deal. I mean, you should be smooth with your inputs and everything. But the signal is not as fast as on other pedals. But at no point I found while driving that this is a problem still. I would love to see maybe a firmware update where you can adjust the amount of filtering. Like maybe three presets like slow, normal, fast. And then you can either have a faster signal that is a little less stable or a slower signal that is more stable. But yeah, that's it from the track. Pedals feel excellent. I, there's not really a lot that I can criticize on these. Let's get to the conclusion. So yeah, to sum it up, these are excellent pedals, 499 euros. I think price performance absolutely on point. I can't really think of many pedals that compete to these in that price bracket. Maybe the SimGrade VX Pro, also excellent option. They feel significantly different to the XP1. Like the throttle has a shorter travel, the brake feels more uh, fluent in the nonlinear transition. Whether that is a good thing or a bad thing, it's just personal preference. Um, I think both are fine. And honestly, this pedal set definitely rivals pedals that cost more than 1,000 euros. And to be honest, I think everybody will find a setting with these pedals that works well for them. If you like to mount haptics, there's an adapter available that just mounts very easily in between the pedal arm and the pedal face for a SimMagic reactor, for example. You've seen it while driving. Uh, I like to put that on the brake. I think it helps if you are not the craziest alien like me. It helps me to feel how to trail off the brake, it helps to feel the ABS, stuff like that. And overall, for the first pedal set by SimLab, I think they did an amazing job. There's not a lot that I can criticize. Maybe like the filtering, which seems a little bit too slow at the moment, but that should be an easy fix in firmware. Just increase the sampling rate a little bit or decrease the amount of samples that I used for the filtering algorithm. Maybe just give us three options, like I said, maybe like a slow, medium and high filtered version. I do think the current one is slightly over filtered, but even with the current implementation, it's not like it's unusable or so. It's just like slightly slower than what the competition is doing. And the second thing that I think they should improve, also a thing that can be easily done in firmware, please implement a linearization algorithm for the throttle so that it actually is a linear reading between throttle arm position and output. You can do it in the race director software, but I would love to see it in firmware and then you can always assume, okay, this is linear now and now I can modify it to whatever I want. But apart from that, really, really very good pedals that I can highly recommend for 99 euros. If you wanna help out the channel and save 5%, I have an affiliate link in the description down below. If you combine that with the code DAN5, you will get 5% off and I will get a little kickback from that. So thank you for using that. If you have any questions about the pedals, feel free to post a comment down below or let me know what you think of them. Maybe you have them, you have some tips for other people. Just post it in the comments down below. It always helps with the algorithm. And I'm also very curious what you think of them. If you did like the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to not miss any future videos. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.